When people think of the Wild West, they may think of lost cities of gold and lost Spanish silver mines. They may think of frontier towns and forts fighting off Native Americans who were simply just defending their native lands. They may even think of the numerous Spanish presidios and missions that dot the landscape, foolishly trying to tame the untamable. Hollywood has taken these concepts and painted a vivid network of tales and imagery on what the West looked like. Deep canyons, red arches, and endless landscapes. Usually, these fall far from the truth, but sometimes they're not far from reality. This is a map of Texas, and I don't need to tell you that it's big. The internet will do that for me anyways. And right here is a little county called Menard. And I believe that inside this little county sits a microcosm of history and stories that can tell us a lot about Hollywood's idea of the Wild West. I'm standing here on the modern day ruins of the Presidio de San Saba on the San Saba River. Established in 1757, it was meant to protect the nearby Mission de Santa Cruz, but ultimately about 15 years later, it was abandoned by the Viceroyalty of Spain when it was deemed too difficult and too expensive to maintain and protect. Less than 100 years later, the U.S. Army would try where the Spanish had failed. In 1852, the U.S. Army established Fort McCavitt, 22 miles west of the abandoned Presidio, also along the banks of the San Saba River. Fort McCavitt was established to help local settlers and protect the frontier, although its first stint of life was rather short, lasting only about seven years until 1859 when the fort was abandoned due to the impending civil war looming over the horizon. And although it had sporadic bursts of life in between, it wasn't until 1868 that the fort would see its true reinstatement. From henceforth, the fort would become a major player in the American Indian Wars. The soldiers and men of Fort McCavitt would go on to play a crucial and important role in the pacification and removal of Native Americans from the Texas frontier. And once this goal was accomplished, the fort was once again abandoned, leaving it at the mercy of local settlers, vandals, and the harsh Texas climate. And that brings me to the question that brought me here. Why has there been so much effort to colonize, control, and tame what, at the surface, seems like an unimportant stretch of brush and grass. Most people would glaze over Menard on the map and never think twice. Yet, over the course of 200 years, from the first Spanish arrival to the late 1800s, much blood was shed and many died trying to live, work, or defend the land here. Whether that was the Native American tribes trying to protect their ancestral homeland, the Spanish trying to exert control over their claimed holdings, or America trying to reinforce and protect the destiny that it had manifested over those who had come before them. So much so that two separate military installations were built within miles of each other, yet a century apart. Both eventually abandoned. So, what gives? And that is where the third and final piece of this puzzle comes in, Los Amagres Mine. In 1753, a Spanish explorer by the name of Juan Galvin set off to found a new presidio and mission in Central Texas. Local natives informed him of precious metals at a location called the Cerro de Amagre. And although this specific location ended, not being, ended up not being particularly useful, the legend of silver and gold in the hills of the Texas Hill Country was born. The Spanish, not content to give up on the idea, continued their search for the Cerro de Amagre and dispatched another party to find the fable site. And that would lead them here, the Riley Mountains in nearby Llano County. 
the leader of the party, Bernardo de Miranda y Flores, would later report that he guaranteed a mine to each of the inhabitants of the province of Texas, based on what they had found. Miranda then lobbied to have another presidio built on the site, but this build ultimately failed. So what does this have to do with Menard, you may ask? The leader of the Presidio de San Saba sent a detachment to the mine to prospect and bring back ore here to the Presidio for processing, ultimately in a bid to move the Presidio closer to the mine to extract its mineral wealth. But not so long after, the nearby Mission de Santa Cruz was raised and ransacked by Native Americans. With its sole purpose, in the eyes of the Viceroyalty gone, the Presidio was ordered abandoned. When they left the Presidio, they left their pile of silver slag on the banks of the San Saba River. It's here where the genesis of the numerous myths and legends of silver and gold mines along the Llano and San Saba rivers is born. A pile of silver slag from a famed mine of riches left at an abandoned Spanish Presidio was the perfect recipe for a legend to take off. Stephen F. Austin heard of these rumors on his first visit to Texas, and soon after, the mythical lost silver mine of San Saba began appearing on maps. These lost mines would also soon appear on pamphlets and other material in an effort to convince settlers to come to Texas. This legend spread further and further, and the lost San Saba silver mine became mainstream folklore in Texan mythology. Many of the very first settlers that Fort McCavitt sought to protect were brought to Menard in prospect of a fame mine and legend that in reality was 70 miles away. And that brings us to the present day. Menard is not rich in silver, far from it. And one can be forgiven for coming here and never looking past the surface, chalking it up as another blur out your window as you continue onwards to a more exciting destination. But. In what should be an otherwise quiet and unassuming slice of Texas sits two abandoned military installations and the legend of a lost Spanish silver mine, all intrinsically linked, all of which shaped this county and this state for centuries. So while Menard may lack the epic canyons, the red rock towers, and the endless sands of Hollywood's image of the West, it embodies the legends and the stories that inspired it. In 1871, William Tecumseh Sherman called Fort McCavitt the prettiest post in Texas. And I think you might have a good argument.